How's it going guys? My name is Chase Farrow and you'll have to pardon the wind because I am not in my garage. I'm not working on my car. I am at Circuit of the Americas. So for those of you who don't know, Super Lab Battle is a global time attack event down here in Austin, Texas at Circuit of the Americas, which is known mostly as being a Formula One track. But the kind of cars that you see here for global time attack are going to be, well, the kind of cars that'll make GT3 cars, GT2 cars blush. We're talking about guys like Ferris Kortumi with his carbon Kevlar C6. Uh, Mike Dussold with Dussold Designs with the his, uh, 1300 horsepower uh, twin turboed 67 Camaro with wild arrow on it. Everything from Pikes Peak hill climb cars to, um, well, you can see some of them over there in the paddock. I don't know if you can see them very well, but I will be making my way over there here shortly. If you know Circuit of the Americas, you know the climb into turn one is pretty pretty well-renowned. Yep. Ah, uh, this is such a cool place. Pictures and TV do not do turn one justice. That climb, I mean, this video really isn't going to either. That climb into turn one is just absolutely insane. Oh, man. I'm, I'm both really excited to be here, but I'm also really bummed because I was supposed to be down here with my car. I was originally going to be running this weekend, but uh, obviously that little kerfuffle with the brakes kind of put a damper on those plans. But to be fair, probably for the best that I come as an attendee the first time and then obviously come back and race next year. God, look at that. Got uh, some C5s back there that would absolutely demolish me. That's okay. Love seeing the C5s out here. I'm looking for the Rafa Racing paddock. And that's it, right here. Man, look at these. Look at this, a Venom F5. Wow. Not what I was expecting to see. Look at that. Definitely not what I was expecting to see. Seen this car in person? Not in person. Wow. This is the first time. So what's funny is he's got the same fender ducks that we do. Oh, I'm not shocked. <laughs> Man, oh, dude, I love. Yeah, the. That's amazing. See, that's that's a solution that I would employ on my car. I just I won't do the big block off plates. They yeah. just look ridiculous. Yeah. That's not invasive though. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, those bezels. Man, look at that. This is this is a C5 track car goals. Man, my favorite thing about it is that it's still a narrow body too. Yeah. They, yeah. Man. So this. Yeah, I haven't seen anything about this. Uh, a couple Instagram posts. Yeah, I so. Like, the Ferris setup. <laughs> yeah, so I was actually out at Dussel Designs last week filming this car. Oh yeah. And uh, I don't. Have you seen it on the ground with the wheels on it? Okay, so when you do, <laughs> it's gonna mess with your brain because. Is it like stupid low? No, 
Um, you might notice that the wheelbase is weird for a C6. See how long this, this yeah. section here on the fender is? Yeah, I see. That's because it's not a C6. Oh, really? It's a C5. Oh, really? Yeah, so... So this car raced, the original owner raced this car. Oh wow, looks a lot better with the dash in it. Yeah. So the original owner raced this car in GM's Corvette Challenge, the, the factory oh, yeah, series. Yeah, yeah. And in 05 when they swapped over to the, um, to the C6 chassis, he was like, well screw that, I'm not buying a whole new car. Yeah. And so what he did was he stripped it down to its frame and its, its uh, tub. And he put a C6 body on it, but he had to. They had to make the f front fenders for it because the C5. I'm about to sound like an idiot if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. It's almost three inches longer in wheelbase. Oh, is it? Yeah, that's why actually C5 or C6s oh, right. look yeah. so wide in comparison. Yeah. Yeah. Now the Z06 Grand Sport ZR1, they are wider than yeah. a C5, yeah. but the C6 base looks wider just because it's a shorter wheelbase. Yeah. Hey, what's up, man? It's good to see it with the dash in it. <laughs> Man. Man, that is cool. Man. I apologize in advance about the wind. It is very windy here in the paddock. Man. So if you've never been to an event like Super Lap Battle or any Global Time Attack event, you really got to make it out because this is one of the few events that you get to, you know, kind of come into the paddock. Definitely try to not get in the way because, you know, these are serious race teams doing serious stuff. But this is one of the few types of events where you can really get up close and personal with the cars and, you know, watch the teams doing their thing. Looks like the... C6 is leaving back there. I wonder where it's going. But yeah, definitely if you've never been to one of these events, you really need to try to make it out. Plus it's not very expensive. I think it was like $25.
I'm in it like a last. So is this just like a, the shell from the 2022 or 2023 car? 2023 that, car? That... It, it's hard to tell. I know they did the Stars and Stripes. Yeah. Because I, I came here in 22 for the race. I sat up at turn three. So I never got to see Carlos signs because that was the year George Russell went into the side. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah. are you Was that... Was that... Was that last year or was that 22? That was 22. Okay, that's I what I thought. I didn't come last year. Oh, gotcha. Oh, no, I think this is the 19. Or was it last year? Yeah. I think this is the RB19 because of the... It's got the really, really, uh, like, squared So this would have been inlets. 23's car. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, that was a, a short trip. Hope everything's okay. This thing sounds so cool. It's the downside of race cars. This awful turning radius.
sure this is limited that's going out now. Because none of them are wide body. I'm curious to see how that after dark speed C5 does. This hill is a lot taller than they make it look on TV, but man, the view up here is incredible. So the Dussold uh, Corvette and Camaro just exited the pits. They should be coming around any minute. Here comes Rafa Racing with the GT3X.
Man, I can't talk enough about just how incredible it is to have like this kind of access. There's just so few events that you can go where, you know, you can get this up close and personal with cars like a Hennessy Venom F5. To be able to go into a paddock like this and see, you know, these kind of cars is, I mean, it's just amazing. It's like they're closing up the, the door. Man, I don't know too many people who can say that they've uh, seen a Venom F5 in person. Look at the tail of this thing. Interior.
Man. So this was a car I wanted to check out earlier, but there's an awful lot of people around it. So it's kind of tough to get close. So this is an LMP2 car. I assume it's probably running in the uh, max effort class. One of the things that's kind of cool about the, these though is that they look really big on TV. Part of the reason for that is an optical illusion created by the windshield. We kind of judge the size of cars based on like the proportion of the windshield to the body. And so obviously compared to the, to the rest of the body or the rest of the cockpit, the windshield is small, but I mean, comparatively speaking, relatively large. And yet the inside of this thing is just tiny. And just to make sure I'm, I'm not completely wrong. This is a retired, this is LMP2, right? Okay. Man, look at some of these cars. Yeah. This Supra was out there just ripping it up on the track. It was really moving. Very impressive. God, this is super cool. Sounds like something is on the dyno over there. This one was out there really putting in some work too. I was really hoping to, to see this out on track. Of course, there's that Datsun over there. It's just absolutely killing it. Look at that. Can't say I expected to see an SF90 at this event, but I think that's part of the fun of it. One thing you definitely have to do when you're at these events though, be mindful of people's splitters. Last thing you want to do is whack your ankles or something on one. Oh. Also can't say I expected to see a K truck with a, uh, you know, time attack arrow on it. That's amazing. Oh, he said you kind of need fuel. How oh, funny. Do do innovation. Oh my god. Trade your life saving. I haven't seen that today. We're having a little bit of a little bit of trouble here. So you're saying the starter's disengaging before it's having an opportunity to turn over. Oh, hold on. Man, as soon as I stopped recording, it fired.
Well, I guess that's gonna finish out day one, uh, which was really fun. I can't wait to come back for tomorrow. I'm gonna probably try and spend more time on the opposite end of the track over like by the back straight and all that good stuff. Um, I actually brought my helmet with me, so I might see if I can score a ride along in like a drift car or you know something like that because I think that would be fun. I got my GoPro. I can throw my GoPro on my helmet. But uh, yeah, can't wait to um, get back here tomorrow morning and just check out more stuff. Things, things should really be heating up, you know, tomorrow. Already saw some really, really impressive times. I think uh, the G-Speed C6 was the fastest that I saw outside of like the max effort cars. So max effort being like the LMP2, the, or LMP3 rather, uh, Rafa's uh, GT3X, McLaren, those. So, um, but yeah, G-Speed was killing it. The fastest time I think I saw from that car was like a, a 204.027, which, I mean, that's getting it around this track. So, I mean, that's knocking on the door of Ferris Kortumi's record from last year, which was like a 2038, I want to say, maybe, something like that. But yeah, so in the meantime, I'm going to uh, go back to the hotel, or go to the hotel, check in, go find some dinner, and uh, yeah, we'll be back at it tomorrow. So we'll go ahead and uh, skip on to that. So the original plan was that day one and day two were both gonna be all part of this video. However, as I've been editing, I realized just how much footage I actually got over the weekend. And so that brought me to a bit of a crossroads where I could either cut out a bunch of stuff or this video was gonna be well over an hour long. And I kind of don't wanna cut out a whole bunch of stuff. And I know that it's really tough to be able to sit down and watch a single video for an entire hour plus. So what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm actually going to go ahead and end this video here, and then the next video will pick up day two. That'll come out in a few days. Uh, and then immediately after that, I've got a whole bunch of stuff that I'm doing. That's actually why this video is actually coming a bit late uh, in comparison to what I actually wanted to do. Because over the last about four weeks, I've had so much work for my clients that I edit for independently. And then on top of that, I've had my own stuff. I've been trying to get the car ready. Uh, you can kind of see I've got uh, my exhaust partially off. I've got a few things going on. There was a couple other pieces over there you might have seen um, that are all part of some track prep stuff that I'm doing for the Lone Star Shootout that's in two weeks. And then on top of that, I've been trying to get everything buttoned up to release our new show that I have with Jason Bottenfield, the owner of the Texaco Camaro. And uh, so I'm really excited about that. The pilot episode just came out this last weekend uh, and I'm actually the guest. So if you guys wanna hear uh, kind of my car story, how I got to where I'm at, then you can follow the link in the description and uh, check that out if you guys could. There's, we've got so many really cool guests that we've got planned that are way, way, way more interesting than me. So if you would, you know, subscribe to that channel and uh, keep an eye out for that because there's going to be a lot of cool stuff coming. But yeah, the day two video for Super Lap Battle will be coming in the next couple of days, uh, as well as after that, some of this track prep stuff that I'm doing, working more on the tail end, and I will be addressing the brake failure that I had and uh, showing you guys how to avoid that. So until then, drive safe, throw your car batteries in the ocean, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.